Um, my paper is about linking school gardening and feeding an experience from the School Plus Home Gardens Project, or we shortly call S Plus HGP, in the Philippines. Um, I'd like to um, mention here my co-authors, but unfortunately only Ma'am Bessie Burgos and Henry Custodi are here. I'm introducing them so that if you have any questions, they will answer. <laughs> okay, so um, as mentioned during the introduction, we presented this uh, paper at the Asia Pacific Societies for Agricultural and Food Ethics Conference in, in Taiwan. Uh, this is part of the, um, actually my presentation now is one of the requirements for the, for the CIRCA travel grant which was uh, granted to me. <clears throat> Uh, first, I'd like to have to acknowledge, to give some acknowledgement to our Deaf and the Buna farmer, uh, partners. I think they're on their way. About 20 of them signify that they, will, they would like to attend this um, seminar. We have five elementary and high school partners from Carlan, from Labuin, Pila, from Alaminos, uh, Kabuyao, Bahayhay, and Santa Cruz. And also my other project teammates, Ms. Katrina Punto, she's not anymore connected with CIRCA, Rochelle and Ms. Cherry Mandelaria. From CIRCA, of course, I'd like to thank them for inviting me to serve as the project leader of this uh, School Plus Home Gardens project, of course for the travel grant, and also many thanks to, direct, to the director, Dr. Hill C. Salihir, who provided the overall uh, direction for this program. Of course, I'd like also to acknowledge my home uh, unit, the University of the Philippines, Los Baños, the Agricultural Systems Institute, and my colleagues from the Edible Landscape Program, and also from the Institute of Food and Human Nutrition under the College of Human Ecology. My discussion topics for this afternoon would be to provide you an overview of the School Plus Home Gardens Project through a video which will be for nine minutes and then this will be followed by an introduction of the conceptual and operational framework linking school gardening and feeding. And then I would like to share with you key success factors of the school gardening and feeding village. Uh, now the video. In the Philippines, almost a third of 5 to 10 year old children are underweight and stunted. And studies have shown that poor nutrition leads to poor academic performance and early school dropouts. Moreover, the youth's declining interest in agriculture poses a major challenge for the future of food security in Southeast Asia. School and Home Gardens are a simple yet effective way of addressing these problems. The concept is nothing new, but what if, through an integrated, participatory, and science-based approach, we could further capitalize on school and home gardens to alleviate hunger, promote nutrition and healthy diets, enhance academic performance, and stimulate the youth's interest in agriculture? These were the challenges that the School and Home Gardens project addressed. With initial funding from the Asian Development Bank and the Japan Fund for Poverty Reduction through the Simeo College, this participatory action research combined the strengths of CIRCA, Simeo Center of Excellence in Agriculture. The University of the Philippines Los Baños one of the leading agricultural universities in Southeast Asia, and the Department of Education, the lead coordinating agency of schools in the Philippines. The idea for this project came about as early as 2010, when then Philippine Education Secretary and CMEO President, Brother Armin Luistro, tapped CIRCA to help strengthen efforts to address these issues. The idea was for the pilot sites in the Philippines to be a takeoff and central learning point to be replicated in other Southeast Asian countries with the assistance of Simeo centers. 
To achieve this goal, the project has three main pillars. Education, Nutrition, and Economics. We implemented the School and Home Gardens project through a series of participatory activities. First, we selected the pilot schools. Then we engage teachers in capacity building activities. Relevant concepts, practices, and technologies were introduced to the teachers. After which, teachers established the school gardens following various concepts including edible landscaping. Schools were then provided with additional garden facilities and equipment. Moreover, we formally link partner schools with their respective local government units. During implementation, we encourage teachers to link very closely with their local government units, with the municipal agriculture officers, and also with the municipal nutrition action officers. Local government units supplied additional garden facilities and manpower. Toward the project end, awards and recognition were given to outstanding schools for their best practices in implementing various components of the project. The project's key accomplishments focused on nutrition, education, and economic well-being. Weight and height of the malnourished children improved. It lessened the malnourished and wasted pupils in our school. School children ate more vegetables. Moreover, students showed better familiarity with vegetables and their nutrients. They have learned to differentiate the nutritive value of different vegetables in our garden. Dahil po sa gulayan, naging familiar po sa mga gulay na akala ko po noon ay isang damo lang. Na yung po pala ay pwedeng kainin. School gardens have become learning sites for various classes, showcasing education in a natural setting. They have also made school children more aware of simple agricultural practices. The school gardens became learning laboratories for children, teachers, and even parents, where they learned about recommended and appropriate technologies and practices of UPLB relevant to the project. Some of the pupils said, uh, Sir, I want to be an agriculturist someday. Having participated in numerous capacity building activities, the pilot school teachers themselves have been actively conducting re-echo workshops. Through the right shops conducted, the teachers prepared a total of 125 lesson plans for their classes. This is the project's way of institutionalizing school gardens as a tool for education. Other than the lesson plans, project partners generated knowledge resources, including a recipe book for the school feeding program and a module on school gardens. The school gardens supplied almost half of the needs of the school feeding program and even extended the duration of the feeding period. Nagluluto po kami ng iba't ibang ulam. At ang maganda po doon, ang nilalahok po namin ay dito po nang gagaling sa aming gulayan. School children brought home some of the harvest for their families. Ito po ay talbos ng kamote. Minsan po ako po ay nakakapag-uwi nito sa aming bahay para po lutuin ni nanay. Families of school children have actively participated in the maintenance of the school gardens. Through the gardening workshops and provision of planting materials, these families have also established gardens in their respective homes. Ayan tulad po ng mga anak ko, mahilig sa gulay. Sa kanila, limbawa po yung talbos, pwede na lang po na ano eh, yung palaga po gusto nila, isasaw po lang po sana, ulam na po nila. Tsaka laking tipid po. Hindi na po bibili sa palengke, hindi ka na bibili sa ano, basta pag may sarili kang tanim, kukuha ka lang.
The pilot schools have planted the seeds and reaped the fruits of their labor. But the school and home gardens project lives on through its self-sustaining and self-rolling design. For one, two other schools in Laguna have already adopted the school and home gardens model through their own initiatives. From this growing network of pilot and sister schools with their respective local governments, we envision the school gardens project to scale out throughout the province of Laguna, becoming a self-propelling model for other interested provinces in the country and even other countries in Southeast Asia. I hope in the near future that this will be a good starting point for other stakeholders to be in partner with us in this noble task of providing proper nutrition to our school children. Overall, the school and home gardens have improved children's nutrition and sparked their interest in agriculture. Let us continue to build gardens that build children's lives and livelihood for their families. Okay, so may I just continue on the success factors in linking school gardening and feeding under the School Plus Home Gardens project. So the video is supposed to have uh, presented the background of this uh, project. We identified eight success factors and we will be presenting them one by one. First success factor is the policies that support school gardening and feeding. The Department of Education has issued ordinances and memoranda since 1970s, during the, this was during the martial law years, when they started uh, the school gardening uh, activities in the schools. It transformed into many different um, names by, as, as the administration changed, so the, also the programs changed, but at least they did not wipe it out. So in 2007, it was implemented as the Gulayan Sa Paaralan Program, or GPP. The school-based feeding program for undernourished school children was promoted since 1997, and the same for many other programs as, as administration changed, then the, the names of the programs also changed. But in 2016, it was called the School-Based Feeding Program. On the other hand, the Department of Agriculture also had issued memorandum and law in 2010 and 2013, the Department of Agriculture Bureau of Plant Industry was tasked to coordinate with DepEd to support school gardening. And in 2010, Republic Act 10068, or the Organic Agriculture Act, directed the integration of organic agriculture in primary and secondary schools. In short, we have the policies, the memo, and the laws. But the question is, what about the implementation? This is where the problem comes in. Let's have a quick look at the challenges in implementing the GPP, the Valencia Paralan, and the school-based feeding program. The initial memos issued by DepEd, and the initial memos were separately issued by DepEd and DA because they are different um, departments. Thus, these were implemented as separate programs in the schools. And even, if, and even if later memos mentioned that harvests from the Bulayan Sa Paaralan program were to be used for the school-based feeding program, still many schools implemented it separately. In some schools, the garden only served as backup to the school-based feeding program. When they run out of budget, then they go to the, to the school garden to, to be able to continue the feeding program. Another challenge was that uh, the GPP was assigned to the EPP or TLA teacher, this is the home economics teacher, while the school-based feeding program was assigned to another person, maybe a teacher or the canteen coordinator. So these are two people and they don't necessarily talk with each other, but they are in the same school. Huh? And um, based on interviews with some teachers, not just in Laguna but also in other, in, in other schools, that the Gulayan Sa Paaralan was done mostly for compliance because there was a memo issued so they have to set up 
a garden in the school. Not necessarily for to be used for feeding or whatever, but it has to be there so that then the supervisor comes and they inspect the, the gulay sa paaral and then they have something to, to show. The GPP was also regarded as additional workload for teachers. Even among our school partners, some of them later on, no, when we had when we were showing some success, experiencing some success already, they were telling us, you know, Mom, actually, when we first started this uh, action research, we were thinking this is additional workload again for, for them. No? On the positive side, the policies were important to give the legal basis to implement and allocate funds for the programs. So there's, there's a specific fund allocated for GPP, so it's easier to move to do things because there's um, funding. The second success factor is the integrated conceptual and operational framework of the project. This was the how the project was conceived from before it was started. Now this was the conceptual framework where we have here um, the school and home gardens having these uh, three pillars, nutrition, education, and economics as you saw it in the, in the video. No? And all of these are intended to improve food security, food and nutrition security um, in the homes. This would also all contribute to other programs of the government, the National Green Program, Adaptation and Mitigation to Climate Change, Solid Waste Management, and Organic Agriculture Program. <coughs> But let's take a closer look about DepEd's school-based feeding program. This feeding program, the school-based feeding program, is only intended for the severely wasted and wasted pupils. Not for everybody. And the feeding period is for only 100 to 120 days. And they have a food budget which is 18 pesos per child. 16 pesos for the food itself and 2 pesos for the operations of the canteen, you know, for cooking, for hiring somebody to prepare the food. So how much can 16 pesos buy? Hmm? Um, so with that, we have this operational model for linking the, the school, gardening, and feeding you know, when we were already implementing the program. Of course, this is our goal for well-nourished, healthy, and well-educated children. So we started with the school gardens, and the school-based feeding program. We are not actually inventing new programs. These are existing programs of the government. But what we wanted to do is to, to, um, to improve the way that it is being implemented in the schools. So we tried to really show the teachers the connections between the school gardens and the complementation with the school-based feeding program. So we have the school heads and the teachers trained together because we had cases where only the principals know and the teachers don't know, or only the teachers are trained and the principals don't know, and then they cannot communicate well, they cannot coordinate the activities. We also uh, encourage our school heads to make sure that the, that the person, the teacher in charge of the school garden, and the teacher in charge of the school-based feeding program are coordinating their activities in terms of what vegetables to plant and what the school feeding program needs. And of course, they were guided by the Department of Education at the provincial level, because it's difficult for the schools to move, to do something without the blessings of the supervisors. And in the school gardens, they were not just for, for food production. We also made use of them for as entry points for teaching food and nutrition organic agriculture, edible landscaping, climate change, and solid waste management. So it's very important to have this uh, <clears throat> close linkage with the school gardens and the feeding program. But remember, there are only 120 days for the feeding program. So the challenge to the school-based feeding program is that um, the PIDS study, this is the Philippine Institute for Development Studies, showed that nine out of the 14 schools that they have surveyed had repeat beneficiary pupils from the previous year's school-based feeding program. That means 
those have already been fed from the previous year and have gained normal status. The next year, they have lost what they have gained and they are not wasted again or severely wasted and they have to enroll again or be part again of the next malnourished, uh, uh, the next school feeding program. So, so the, the way that the children's uh, nutritional status is going up and down, no? it's not sustained. No? And why is this? Because of lack of food during the rest of the year. The feeding days is only 120 days. And we have 365 days in a year. So what about the remaining 245 days? Where will it come from? So there's actually lack of food during the rest of the year, which is where they are not being fed anymore. Naturally, they would lose their weight. And of course, illnesses, because if you have a weak um, system, you're unhealthy, then you're very prone to illnesses. And of course, parents' attitudes and values. So if we go back, we went back again to our operational model, again, the school gardens, the 120 days, is not enough. It works, the children gain normal status after 120 days. But after that, they lose it. So we need to make an intervention for the remaining 245 days plus. We need to do something else. And this is where the home gardens came in. Home feeding to be supplied, uh, vegetables to be supplied from the home garden. And uh, yeah, uh, good collaboration or coordination between uh, what, what to plant and what the family wants to eat. And of course, focusing on more nutritious food. So we, to be able to, um, for, for the home gardens to be successful, of course, this is not anymore the work of the teacher. No? So we had to mobilize the Municipal Agriculture Office and also later the Office of the Provincial Agriculturist to help with um, sustaining the home gardens. No? Because uh, the Municipal Agriculture Office actually had programs supporting uh, giving seeds, giving inputs for the garden, um, fertilizers, organic fertilizers, and also um, garden tools. No? They have that bro program, but they give it to farmers only. Households were not included. So we had to tell them, please give some also for our homes. And also provide also the inputs and services because they provide training, actually. But, but they're target beneficiaries are always farmers. It never occurred to them that households and families and schools would also need their services. So through this project, this is what we have also um, achieved, no, the late age. For the home feeding, this was, um, we, were, we got help from the Municipal Nutrition Action Office, the Municipal Social Welfare and Development Office for the, for the children whose families were beneficiaries of the Four Peace Program. And then of course we also mobilized the, the BNS or the Barangay Nutrition Scholars because these are already in the Barangay, existing people. We only have to, to get their um, collaboration. And of course the BHW, the Barangay Health Workers, to help us monitor the, the nutritional status of the children. <clears throat> and all of this would move under the baton of the local government unit, the mayor. So we have to we encourage our school teachers to work with their closely with their mayors. Some mayors were very supportive. I think all of them, no? This is the six partner schools that we have. Okay, so this this is structure is how we, we operate the project. And of course we also later on we linked with the Department of Agriculture Regional Field Office because at that time, I think even up to now, they were giving um, substantial inputs. No? For example, uh, one of our schools received a um, vermicomposting house because this is being given, given by the Department of Agriculture, but normally to farmers associations. But this time, they gave one to our partner schools. Right now, very, I think last year, we one of our schools, the school from Bayan, no? 
they also they received a greenhouse. No, they were able to. What we did was to to talk with the DA regional field office and tell them, please include our teachers, please include our partner schools in your list of recipients or whatever you will be be giving to farmers. And so they did, no, step by step. Okay, so what's important here is the linkage between the school gardens. But also the school gardens and school feeding program was not enough. It has to have a counterpart, the home feeding and home gardens. All for attaining the goal of well-nourished, healthy, and well-educated children. Our third success, key factor for success, is multi-stakeholder capacity building and linkages among school teachers and heads. Within the school, there has to be coordination already, the parents, the local, provincial, and regional government units. For capacity building for school teachers and other stakeholders, we had many consultation and planning workshops, training of teacher trainers, joint lesson plan workshops. No? We we conducted workshops so that the teachers can write whatever they learned from the training into their lesson plan so that they, when they go back, they have ready lesson plans that they can use for their classes. Also, we have field tours and cross school garden visits no? to be able to see real gardens. No? Here, the teacher's capacity and confidence to engage in the School Plus Home Gardens project was strengthened through participatory planning, action, and monitoring and evaluation. Second is how to mobilize and build the capacity of parents. First of all, was value strengthening for parents to be more responsible for the nutrition of their children. We had parents who said they don't need to bother with the nutrition of their children because anyway, the school will feed them. No? But, um, it's, uh, anyway, the school is feeding them, so why bother? No? These kinds of parents. We, not in this program, but in other, in other areas, we were told that there are some mothers who can spend the whole day playing tong eats <laughs> instead of finding food for the family. No, so it's, it's really <coughs> values, no? What do they value, no? The, the pumpkins or the, the children, hungry children? We also encourage the parents to get involved in the school garden activities. For the, child, for the parents, for the households who don't have land to cultivate, we, they, we, they were encouraged to join the school gardening program, no? the, especially in, in San Andres, no? Um, the, the principal invited the school, the, the parents, okay, do your gardening here in the school because anyway, it's your children who will be fed by whatever you can harvest from this garden. The, the parents of the malnourished children who are part of the school-based feeding program. Of course, the, we also asked, the, we also requested the local government units to conduct training and seminars on food production, gardening, and food and nutrition for the households, for the families. Either to invite them also when they conduct their regular training for farmers, but much better if they can conduct um, specifically for the households. Of course, we had to improve also the linkage with the LGU and the local school board. Because I, I, we discovered that each uh, municipality has a local school board for, for providing inputs and services. We also conducted cooking contests, parent-child cooking contests, and the ingredients that they, be, they will be using should come from the vegetables from the school gardens. So it encouraged the utilization of the vegetables coming from the school gardens. From that parent-child cooking contest, we were able to compile a recipe book, and it has already been standardized by the College of Our Human Ecology, our uh, College of Human Ecology. And in the end, the family is actively engaged in their children's nutrition through school and home gardening. This is the lady that you saw also in the video. Now for improved coordination among local, provincial, and regional government units, again we come back to this, to review this uh, operational model, we just want to focus on the importance of 
um, coordination between the school heads and teachers, the Department of Education, the local government units, the regional field offices, the municipal provincial office, together with the homes. It's always important that all these different actors can sit together, and that is what our project provided. We had consultations and workshops, putting them together in this room to plan together in per municipality. Because in their municipality, they don't talk to each other. But if, if you invite them to Sirka, oh, Sirka, let's go. Okay, fourth success is the integrating garden with the school curriculum. So the garden, of course, is a nice place now for children to to plant and enjoy planting, be together, also together with the teacher, especially during harvest time. Uh, that's the best moment for the garden. But we also use the school gardens as outdoor living laboratories where children were taught science, math, and English using the gardens. And but we, I'd like to just mention here that we focused on for this project. We focused only for grade four and grade seven um, students. Fifth success factor is the improved garden structures and planting techniques for year-round production of vegetables. Students enjoy planting, but most important, students enjoy eating what they plant. Children who don't like to eat vegetables began eating vegetables especially when everyone else is eating. So they will join. Huh? They have a happy time producing the vegetable and they're, they're so proud of their products and they like to eat it. Some appropriate technologies for climate smart organic vegetable production. We have this um, greenhouse and then we have this um, rain water collector. It's, it's, we show it's very small, but we just like to give the idea to the parents and to the teachers that we can collect rainwater and use it later, save it later for the garden. We also taught the teachers how to prepare um, seedlings because this is one of their problems in maintaining their gardens because they, they don't have this, the, the greenhouse, they just broadcast the seeds in the flats, and if it rains, of course it will be washed out, or they're waiting for so long and nothing is coming out because the ants have already carried them away. You know, when it's possible that the, the seeds will sprout and then if you have a very sunny day, then it will burn the, the young seedlings. You know? So that's why we also provided the seedling, and we also gave them the technique of how to grow the, the seedlings inside the greenhouse and wait for the seedlings to become like this before they outplant it. So um, what's good about this is that the teachers were able to supply all the seedling requirements for all the gardens in the whole school, not just for grade four and grade seven. They were able to share the, the seedlings to the other grade levels because in most of the schools, each grade level has a has a defined garden to till. This is an example of the, this was submitted by one of the partner schools. This, uh, these are the, the vegetables that they have grown and these are the, what they can harvest at, at each period, not each month. So the technique for year-round production of vegetables is to plant different kinds of vegetables. And of course, plant at different months. You don't plant everything at the same time. It has to be a calendar. A calendar planting so that you get uh, your vegetables also every month. Six key factors participatory development approach. We are not top down. We engage them, we, facil we facilitate them with participatory processes for participatory visioning and situation analysis. We held workshops where the teachers analyzed their own situation and made a vision of what they want to accomplish. Joint action planning, teachers together with the LGU, together with uh, parent leaders, collaborative implementation, they're doing it together, and of course the participatory monitoring and evaluation. In the planning, we already have what we have already agreed on what they will monitor and what will be the indicators. So they don't have to wait for us, they can do it by themselves. 
for seventh key factor would be the inclusive and stepwise scaling up. After we have had some success already, we said we have to uh, roll out to other schools, you know, not just the original six, but we have to spread the word to other schools. So we said no school shall be left behind. Include, we will include the smallest and the farthest schools. Normally, for programs like this, it's just the central schools which are um, tap, and then they just wish that, the, that there will be, um, that, it, that it will spill out to the other schools. But it doesn't happen if you don't make it um, proposing. Of course, continued coordination with your respective local, provincial, and regional partners because now if you if you expand to other schools, those new schools would also need the support of the of the NGU. You know? They would also need the, the seeds and all the other inputs. And then this is the scaling up is stepwise. And we documented the scaling up from pilot to sister to brother schools. These are the terminologies so that we would know the where at, state, at which stage the scaling up is happening. So we have here the original partner school. Together with the LGU, we challenge them to be able to adopt three sister schools. And then for, for the next, for the following year, the sister school, each sister school would also adopt three other brother schools within their municipality. I think some of those who are here are already sister schools. My brother, sister schools. Uh, sister schools now. Sister schools. Sister schools. Sister schools. Sister schools. Sister schools. Okay, so this is on the map, this is how it looks like. The, the pilot schools, we have the six. And then we have these two adaptive schools. The two adaptive schools are special. <coughs> We, they did not receive, they were able to set up their own school plus home gardens project without financial support from CIRCA. They just requested us to include them in all the capacity building activities, you know, the workshops, the, the training, that's all they asked for. And the rest, they found a way how to do it, how to mobilize their own resources. So that's why we were really very proud of these two schools. After one year, this is how it looks like now, one and a half years, each of the pilot schools have three, except for Santa Cruz, because this is the high school. And then they, they now have three, 23 sister schools and three brother schools. This is Labuin. Labuin Elementary School already has three brother schools. Now the last... Um, key success factor would be information dissemination. For this project, we have the Facebook, where teachers are very active. <laughs> and I think through this Facebook, they are already being requested to host um, school school heads from other, or teachers also from other provinces. No? Who want to, oh, it has become, their school gardens have become part of the agritourism of the, of the municipality because they, through the Facebook, they, they, they become known to other schools. And of course, we have the video that you already saw. We have tarpaulin flip charts that we gave to the schools. We are coming up with a guidebook. We also produce brochures, flyers, and posters. We have already been featured in newspapers and magazines. Um, CIRCA decided last April to conduct an international conference promoting the multifunctionality of, of trainers. Yes, and immediately followed by the training of trainers for Southeast Asia. And I just want to let you know that there were many Filipinos who, that we included in this um, training of trainers for Southeast Asia. And then very recently, I was told that among Michelle of Labuin was interviewed yes. the TV Patrol. Yes. Uh -huh. Is that right? Yes. Is Ma Michelle here? Ma Michelle, you have to share us the... Uh, Calabarzon. TV Patrol, Calabarzon. But Elson told me he saw it in Mindanao. Elson is now here and he's in Mindanao. He said he saw it in... Okay. So now, see ya, national na tayo ha.
no Michelle. Okay. So this is how the Facebook group looks like for the School of Parents Project. Uh, Ma Michelle is active here, no? And this is the link for for the, the video that we, show, we showed you. But this is in YouTube. It, I I know that it's also in the Circa website. And these are the um, ten uh, tarpaulin flip charts that we uh, gave to the schools. This actually was developed from an earlier project that I did, but we shared this um, tarpaulin flip chart to, to Circa. It's just a matter of reprinting it and giving it to the schools. We also have this uh, uh, charts, posters, and this is the, I'm not sure if this is still the cover for the guidebook. It's, it's still, huh? So this is the cover, and I think it's about ready to go to printing. This is the flyer for the International Conference on School Gardens, held last April, and back-to-back -back with the training of trainers on scaling up the school plus home gardens model in Southeast Asia. And for conclusions, let us review the success factors of the school gardening and feeding linkage. First is policy support. Second is the integrative, conceptual, and operational framework. Third is the multi-stakeholder capacity building and linkage for school teachers, parents, local, provincial, and regional government units. Integrating gardening into the school curricula. Improved garden structures and techniques. <coughs> participatory development approach. Inclusive and stepwise scaling up. And information dissemination. So with that, let me just have some parting words. In everything we do, let's do good, let's be felt. And together, let's make a difference in the lives of our children. Salamat.